Hey, 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 my name is Christine and welcome to today's crock pot video. <laughs> there is a fly flying around and he's gonna fly in front of the lens, I know it. Who else has flies in their house? Oh my gosh, it's showtime! It's showtime. So I have not really said much about this, but I am a member of the Croctober. Don't laugh, because every time I say that, my kids think it's hilarious. It's basically a group of YouTubers who are doing a crock pot recipe every single day for the month of October. There's a whole Facebook group, there's giveaways, so I'll leave the Facebook group down below and then the recipes that I am using today down below as well. So what I'm doing in today's video is I'm actually taking some of the recipes of the girls that have already posted a video and testing them, seeing what my family thinks of them. How fast are they to come together? And then I actually have like one or two of just my own as well. We're gonna do a couple of crock pot recipes today, basically dump it in the crock pot, walk away, boom, you're done. And we are going to kick off with Jennifer's Cranberry Chicken from A Country Life. If you guys have not checked out her channel, I will leave her channel and all of them that I use in this video, their original video down below, and then also the recipes as well. All of these recipes should be fairly easy. I know I'm not wearing any makeup right now, but it's casual, this is a casual video. Because we're just dumping stuff in a crock pot, it's gonna be easy peasy. So here's my crock pot right here. It is fairly large. Six, six or seven quarts. I got it at Walmart for like 20 bucks. It's not fancy at all. It is the Crock-Pot brand. Here is what we were doing. I have four ingredients for this meal. Onion soup mix, French dressing, which makes me think of <laughs> Better Off Dead. Um, it's one of my favorite 80s movies where the mom makes the French dinner for the neighbor girl. And she's like, French dressing, French bread, Peru. Anyway, if you haven't seen Better Off Dead, you should totally do it. It's very, very young John Cusack. One can of cranberry sauce. I use the jelly kind and not the whole cranberry kind. It doesn't matter which one you use, but I feel like, is it really cranberry sauce if it doesn't have the ridges of the can in the sides of it? I mean, that's a legitimate question. And however much chicken you need to feed your family. Uh, we're gonna do bone-in chicken. It just cooks better over a long period of time. Chicken breasts tend to get like kind of dry. So I'm a really big fan of dark meat and bone in chicken when you're doing something like low and slow like this. I have thighs because I think thighs are awesome. There are six, I think six thighs in here. You can take the skin off, you can leave it on. That's totally your call. I usually take mine off, but today I'm feeling extra efficient, not lazy. So I'm gonna leave the skin on just because that's how I feel. I, I actually need to go back and rewatch Jennifer's video because I don't even remember how long this is supposed to be in here, but I'm thinking if you put it on low for eight hours or high for four to five hours, that's pretty much your standard when it comes to crock pot easy peasy meals like this, right? Basically until the chicken's done. I guess depending on your crock pot also, that could be, that could also be a factor. Here is my chicken. Oh my goodness. And I'm gonna use tongs because I don't wanna get chicken hands and then wash my hands all day. All I'm gonna do is just kind of throw them in here. I have six people in my family, so this is one piece of chicken per person. I would actually typically do more than this, maybe eight, eight to 10, because several of my kids like to eat two pieces of chicken, but at the store I went to for this, this was like the largest package of chicken. So we're just gonna go with it and make sure we have enough side dishes to make everybody full. Jennifer took all of the other ingredients and mixed them together before pouring them in here. And because I'm efficient, I'm just gonna pour them in sans mixing. <laughs> and I don't wanna dirty another dish. I'm, I'm really helping you guys out here. You could do it the other way, but you also don't have to. <laughs> Okay, she used, wow, that is like shockingly red. Is that disturbing to you guys? That's a little disturbing to me. Um, Jennifer used a Western dressing, but I cannot find that here in Idaho, which is weird because I do live in the West, but whatever. I can't find a lot of things around here. One package of this onion soup mix. So we'll give that a little sprinkly sprinkle like that. This stuff makes really good roast also. And one can of your cranberry sauce of choice, cranberry jelly, cranberry sauce, whatever. Fingers crossed it has the can lines on it. Oh, did I get it? Do you guys see it? Hang on, you see those ridges? Yes, now that's the kind of cranberry sauce you want. I'm just kind of spreading it out just a little bit. There we go. Oh no! Lid on, that's all she wrote. That is 
so fast and easy. I guess the real trick is figuring out what you're gonna have as a side dish. And I think Jennifer did green beans and mashed potatoes, which sound delicious, but I'm planning on using those in one of the other crock pot meals. So I think I'm gonna do rice. I have a baked rice recipe that is bomb. You cook it in the oven. I've kind of like done it in the Instant Pot a little bit. It's not quite the same but it's close and there's like a lot of butter in it. So it's really delicious. So if we did like rice and maybe some other vegetable, I'll try and like, I have a lot of carrots. Oh, oh, I can do carrots in the air fryer. That's what I can do. Cause I'm trying to use up what's in my fridge before I go shopping again. We're just gonna leave this for several hours and I'll meet you back here when it's time to make the side dishes for dinner. You could go as easy as you want, open some canned green beans and like call it a day. But yeah, I think I'm gonna use up those carrots and rice. So I'll see you later. Okay, hey, here's my rice side dish, and I don't know what the heck happened to my little casserole dish, but it like got stained somehow. So if you guys know how to get that off, I would really like to know, because that is like weird. I can't even scrub it off with my finger. Anyway, we're gonna use a half a cup of butter, so that's one stick, one cup of rice, which I need a little bit more than this, three teaspoons or cubes of chicken bouillon, three cups of boiling water, and we're gonna put this in the oven for one hour covered, like this. And then, oops. And then once we're done, we're just gonna pull it out and it's gonna be done. And then here are my carrots that I had in the freezer. So I'm just gonna peel these, give them a rough chop and stick them in the air fryer for some air fryer carrots. And that's gonna be our dinner. So we're gonna have the carrots, the baked rice, and then my cranberry chicken, which is boiling away. Okay, I didn't use the entire stick of butter, maybe two thirds, because I remembered in my notes that it's like very, very buttery. So I cut the butter back just a little bit. Here come the three cups of water with the chicken bouillon in it. All right, there we go. And maybe like just a little, like a little star like this. Lid, 350 degrees for one hour. Here's my baked rice. I usually double it, but I wasn't feeling like getting a big pot out today. Can you hear it? It's like sizzling. This is really hard to stir left-handed because I am right-handed, so this feels very, very awful. But I'm telling you, this rice is so good by itself, with fish, with chicken. It's such an easy side dish and it tastes so yummy, so I would highly recommend it. Here's the completed cranberry chicken. It smells really, really delicious. I put some of the sauce on my rice here and I have my carrots right here. So let's do a taste test and I will report back. Cranberry chicken review. Number one, I would say the sauce is very delicious. Really good on the rice. It would be great on potatoes, probably noodles. The chicken by itself, like if you just eat the chicken with no sauce, it's kind of bland. However, if you make sure there's sauce on the bite of chicken that you eat, very delicious. I think the sauce is what makes it. So put sauce on like every, <laughs> just eat it with a spoon, man. Hook it to my veins. The sauce is really, really good. Kind of sweet, kind of tangy. My kids loved it. My kids loved the chicken. Andrew kept talking about how great it was. Ryan had two pieces, so Dave didn't get any chicken. <laughs> I had only made like the six, the six chicken thighs. I should have done, I knew I should have done more than that. It was good. I would recommend the cranberry chicken. 10 out of 10 recommend. Hey, in today's crock pot dinner, I am going to be using a recipe from my friend Tiffany over at Large Family Love. And she made a butter beef in the crock pot and I conveniently had basically all of the ingredients. Let me show you what you need and how it's gonna go. So over here, I basically have most of my ingredients already and my crock pot. And I was told that on the quartz countertops, I need to put my crock pot on something so it doesn't discolor the quartz. So I'm taking you guys' suggestions and I have it on this huge cutting board. Here are my ingredientes. One beef roast. I have this uh, rolled roast and she didn't say what kind, so we're just gonna go with it and see if it works out. One packet of ranch, one stick of butter, some pepperoncinis. I think I'm probably just gonna dump this whole thing in there and leave it whole because these are delicious. And it did say an Italian seasoning packet, which I don't have, and I don't even have Italian dressing. It's actually not one of my favorites, but basically I'm going to assume it's Italian seasoning with salt. So I'm gonna add these three kind of smaller packets of Italian seasoning and some, where did my salt go? Haha! -ha! Some Himalayan pink salt and hopefully that will be about it. 
and then I'll add some water as well. This is basically the main part of the dish and then this is gonna cook. I'm gonna put it on low, I think, for like eight to 10 hours. All I need to do now is make some side dishes. I love serving like a shredded beef roast on mashed potatoes, so I will probably do mashed potatoes and then try and find maybe a green vegetable in the freezer that I need to use up and have that on the side. It'll be super easy. Okay, here is my beef the butter and I salted this already. So now here come the Italian seasonings. And it occurred to me that Italian seasoning dressing packet probably has uh, garlic in it as well. So I'm trying to decide if I wanna add more garlic, but I could add fresh garlic later if I really feel like I needed it because ranch also has garlic. So here comes the ranch. Oops. And one cup of water, hang on. Okay, don't spill. In the instructions, it says to reserve a quarter cup of the liquid of this jar, but then it didn't say why. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna use the whole jar right now. Come on. <laughs> yes. Always nervous that I'm not gonna be able to do that. I realize this is probably a little much, but it's a whole dang thing. Come on. Get out of there, peppers. <laughs> Come on. spread those around a little bit. Dave will probably just eat all those <laughs> by themselves because he loves them. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Lid on. And I will see you later. We just finished mashing our potatoes and those are like so creamy. I may have added too much liquid, but they're so creamy. Oh my gosh, they're good. And here is my crock pot. Ooh, butter beef, I think is the name of that. So I took the roast out and I took the paper, not paper, the like the butcher's twine and cut that off and sliced, shh, and sliced it and then stuck it back in the juice. So it would kind of like absorb the juice. We'll serve this like alongside the potatoes and maybe put some of this juice on top. And I made some green beans. So let me show you a finished plate. Okay, dinner plate, that's what it looks like. Everybody has some. Haley put juice all over hers, wonderful. Here's what we have left over. I mean, no one's come back for seconds yet, but we still have potatoes. There are still green beans and a couple of slices of beef, but not very much. Review on the dinner, awesome. This beef roast in the crock pot, fabulous. Go make it, like go make it tomorrow. Go buy the ingredients today, make it tomorrow. Tell them what you said. I'm sad that I'm full. Because you just want to keep eating it? It's really good. These mashed potatoes are so creamy. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. What did you think of the roast, Ryan? What did you think, Tyler? Dave, tell me what you said. This may be the best crock pot roast I've ever had. If you like banana peppers, that's genius. But I don't even think the roast itself tastes like banana peppers, but it's like the acid mm -hmm. From the and, ta peppers. and tang that like cuts through the meat and makes it so tender. Family and kid approved. Go make it, I'm not kidding. Tiffany, that recipe was bomb. Like, so good. For tonight's dinner, I'm gonna clean out the freezer a little bit and do this crock pot Latin chicken that I made in my last freezer meal prep video. Two chicken breasts, some red bell pepper, green bell peppers, bouillon cube, garlic powder, onion powder or minced onion, some cumin, salt, black pepper, and I'm gonna add some black beans. So it's been sitting out for like an hour or two, so I can pour it out of the bag basically, but I'm just gonna dump it in the crock pot, add like a cup of water because I did put some chicken bouillon in here, and instead of on low, I'm just gonna put it on high just to get it going quicker, so let's do that right now. That doesn't look like that much food, does it? Maybe this crock pot's too big for that. It'll be fine, that's my motto for everything. That's my motto for life. Don't look at me, my hair's not done. All righty, here we go. Got a little bit of water going on. Lid and plug it in, baby. Here is my Latin chicken all cooked. I took the chicken out and just chunked it up and put it back in here. Okay, you've covered it up, Haley. We're serving it with rice. Okay, hang on, I'll show you. Rice, 
and then the Latin chicken, and then lettuce, sour cream, and Haley dotted some Thrive Market salsa, which Haley and Dave both say is fab. How's the um, Latin chicken dish? Very, very good. Do we have any limes? Oh, yes, I have one sad lime. <laughs> <laughs> My last crock pot meal for this video is actually going to be a breakfast that I saw on Kimmy's channel. She's in her apron. She did a pumpkin steel cut oats crock pot dish. So that is what we're gonna do. It's an overnight thing. So I have here one cup of steel cut oats. I thought about doubling this just because I have a bigger family, but then I realized I didn't have enough pumpkin and I didn't wanna go get another one. It's gonna be super easy, just you have the oats right here, three and a half cups of almond milk or water or whatever, I'm doing almond milk. And I feel like when I was a kid, I have like vague memories of my mom trying to do oatmeal in the crock pot overnight and then we were like, ew, gross mom. So I don't know if you guys are around my age, like somewhere in the 90s, did your mom try and do cool like crock pot breakfast? Cause mine did and then I was like, ew, gross. <laughs> One cup of pumpkin, which I thought about not measuring, but I'm gonna measure it. That's close-ish, so in goes the pumpkin. The recipe does say to add honey, but I think I'm gonna leave this sweetener out completely until tomorrow morning so we can add to taste at that point. So I'm just gonna leave that out for now, but we're gonna do some salt, some spices, and I think that's it. Okay, just uh, a little sprinkly sprinkle of salt and it says pumpkin pie spice but I have never bought that in my life so I'm just gonna use a whole bunch of cinnamon and I am not measuring this I'm just like I love cinnamon so we're just gonna add a bunch a little bit of ground cloves which can be overpowering if you do too many so a little bit of that and ground nutmeg which I feel like you could probably use a little bit more and it would be all right. And I'm actually gonna give it some whiskey business to kind of mush all of this together. And that's really all it is. You could probably do this in the Instant Pot morning of. In fact, I do that quite often with steel cut oats. I just put one cup of the steel cut oats in the Instant Pot with three cups of water before I go run when I used to go to the gym and set it to go. You only set it for three minutes, but um, I let it sit just on like a natural release until I'm back from the gym. And then as soon as I'm back, it's done and ready to go. So it's like set it and forget it kind of a thing just in the hour that I go work out. Here is my mixture. It actually smells just like a pumpkin pie. It smells so, so good. And remember, I didn't put any sweetener in this. We are gonna, well, I gotta plug it in, Christine. Good grief. And it is on low and I gotta find the lid. <laughs> and just let it go for eight hours and I will see you guys in the morning. It is the next morning and when I got up, my family had already attacked the oatmeal. <laughs> so unfortunately, I cannot try it for you, but I'm gonna do my best to tell you how it went. Flavor profile wise, it was fine. Serving size wise, way too small. Dave said it was basically like one and a half servings and that is it. My family eats a lot of oatmeal. When we eat oatmeal, I would have to like triple that recipe, which is a ton of milk. He said the our crock pot runs too hot to leave it on overnight. So I'm wondering if I had put it on low instead. No, no, I said it wrong. I'm wondering if I had put it on warm instead of low and maybe let it run a couple hours longer. So I think as it sat, it ran for about eight hours on low, which was way too hot, just because my crock pot runs hot. If it had been maybe, like let's say I had put this together at like seven o'clock last night, and then we ate breakfast at seven this morning, so like 12 hours on warm instead of low, it would have been a lower heat and not maybe overcooked so much. Flavor-wise, it was fine. Like I said, you know, you do need to add your flavorings as you wish. So I don't think it was bad. I just think it needed a couple of tweaks to make it perfect for my particular crock pot and my family serving size wise. I haven't like pulled my hair back or done anything yet. So this is like kind of what I look like when I wake up. Hello. Anyway, those are a couple of the crock pot recipes that I wanted to try for you in this video. I would say all winners all very good. I tweak the oatmeal one just a little bit, but that's part of being a cook and trying new recipes is that you're gonna try something and then for your particular family or tastes, maybe you wanna tweak it just a little bit and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think you should be tweaking recipes that you find in cookbooks 
if you think it needs a little bit extra salt or if you think it's too spicy, let's change a couple of things. And it's totally okay to do that. Once again, all of the recipes and videos that I found uh, that I tested for you today, I will leave all of those down below in the doobly-doo. If you guys like Crock-Pot videos, and want to see more of them give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet because i do have another crock pot recipe video coming up in about a week go check out the crocktober facebook page and the list of ladies down below if you want to see some other crock pot recipes thanks for hanging out with me today i always have a good time with you and i will see you in the next video